Hello and welcome to Insta Vlogs Global Report. This is Fit Money with fresh updates and more citizen voices from all over the world. Story for the day are Afghanistan's future crossed the agenda at the London conference later this week. Catholics cut in to reject Kenyan law seeking legalization of abortion. George not Haiti aid as three peacekeepers get killed in the quake. And phone messaging makes accessing the results easier for the Ugandan students. Afghan civil society organizations have joined hands just ahead of London conference later this week to discuss the future of Afghanistan. The organizations are demanding action against those responsible for human rights violations within the country. T.J. Ramadine Bairam sheds light on the demands made by these groups. This is Ramadin Bahram on Instablogs.com. In the wake of London conference to be held on the 28th of this month, the civil society organizations functioning in Afghanistan have put forth their demand less and have strongly asked the international partners and decision makers who will come together in London to accept and work on their demands, which include the prosecution of individuals and groups accused of war crimes and violations of human rights. Their other demands include finding new ways of avoiding civilian death and military operations against the rebels, strengthening government institutions and implementing justice transition program, which was started by the Human Rights Commission of Afghanistan to document the war crimes and ultimately bring to justice elements responsible for that. Kenyan Catholic bishops have threatened to disown the draft constitution seeking legalization of abortion unless it protects life in all its phases. Peter Rose Van Gogh thinks that no one is willing to support a legislation that upholds the culture of death. This is Rose Wangoi, a citizen journalist from Kenya, reporting on Mr. Blog. How can we legalize death when we want life? That could be the question many Kenyans are asking themselves after the Parliamentary Select Committee on Constitutional Review said that life begins at birth. The members of Parliament discussing contentious issues in the proposed draft constitution is now at loggerheads with the church over the clause that seeks to legalize abortion. I believe like-minded Kenyans would also reject the new law if it was subjected to a referendum as it is. The Catholic Church is beheading the revolt against the clause and has written to the committee urging it to clearly state that life begins at conception and ends with natural death. This, they say, is necessary to prevent legalized abortion. Abortion has been one hot debate which is not addressed would lead to the toppling of the new law that Kenya has longed for over 20 years. I don't think that anyone would like to be party to any legislation that supports a culture of death and any attempt to deny this truth is wrong and misleading. King Abdullah II of Jordan has been feeling in constant touch with the country's peacekeeping forces working in Haiti since the report of earthquake shook Haiti's capital port of prince killing at least three Jordanian soldiers as well. Today, Rada Buzurek provides more on the story from Jordan. Around three months after the plane crash that resulted in the death of five Jordanian peacekeepers in Haiti, three Jordanian peacekeepers died and 23 were injured in the 7.0 magnitude earthquake that hit the area and caused devastating losses of lives and properties. Jordanian battalions were not terrified by the spot where they lost eight of their fellow soldiers within around three months and they took the initiative to set up a 12 bed field hospital in their base at Port au Prince. Six tons of aid supplies were sent over to Haiti along with doctors and the rescue team. Supplies were sent over through two planes with the hope that this could be a small step towards helping a nation in need. Easing student difficulties, the Uganda National Examinations Board has launched a short messaging service that enables students to sit national exams to get the results immediately after release through phone messaging. Peter John Kibuchia says that the students are deeply excited by the ease in the whole process. The Uganda National Examinations for Geneva has launched a short message service, SMS, that enables students to sit national exams to get their results immediately after their release. Parents and pupils are already using the SMS facility following the release of primary school examination results this week, and they are excited by the ease of the whole process. To access the service, users enter prescribed keywords in their mobile phones, 
followed by their index numbers. They then send the SMS to the code number 6600. They then receive their examination results and registration details instantly. Each SMS is charged 500 shillings or 25 cents. The SMS facility is initially available on the three telecom companies, MTN, Sain, and Uganda Telecom. The Education Minister has held a new system and she says it will make it easy for students living in the countryside to quickly know their stores in the national exam without having to travel. If you want your voice to be heard by Merlin, that is the blog for your choice. You can contact us at kjadinstablogs.com. That's all for today's show. We'll be back with fresh updates and more citizen voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team of Global Report.